working on an answer, find, and shade worksheet that's also called a two-in-one. And we'll talk about that in a second. And this worksheet covers percent of a number. And if you didn't know what a percent of a number is, it's kind of like you're finding the piece or the portion of the number that you have. For example, if I said you had 50% of six, well, 50% is half. So it's saying you have half of six, which is three. And that is the percent of a number. Let's take a look at the directions. First off, it says answer all the problems. Then it says round the answers to the nearest whole number. Whole number is like one, two, five, six, a hundred. So for instance, if you had 24.1, well, since it says round to the nearest whole number, you would round that to 24 because closer to 24 than 25. If I gave you 24.8, well, that's closer to 25, so you would round it or estimate it to 25. And that's rounding or estimating to the nearest whole number. Next, it says choose odd or even. And this is what this two and one means. It says right here, it says odd, only shade in the odd, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen numbered problems. So if you picked odd, after you answer number one, you would look for the answer in here and you would shade that one in. Then you do the same thing for three and five and seven and nine and so on. If you picked even, you'd only shade in the even numbered problems. Like two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? 10, 12, 14, 16. So you'd shade in only those. So if you picked even, you would not shade in number one, but you would shade in number two. You would not shade in number three, and you would shade in number four. And what this does is it gives you two different pictures. I don't know how they did it, but there's two pictures in this art worksheet. That is pretty cool. All right, so you choose odd to get one picture, even to get another but you still have to answer all the questions. Let's get started. Problem number one says 42.5% of 80. 42.5% of 80. Now, there's basically two ways of solving a percent of a number. There's the fraction way and the decimal way. I personally like the decimal way, but I'm going to show you both ways just in case. So here is the fraction way. The fraction way will look like this. You have 42.5%. Well, a percent is out of 100. So basically you're saying you have 42.5 over 100. This of right here turns into multiplication, and then you have 80. And all you're going to do is solve it like a fraction or a multiplication of fractions. We're going to change this 80 to a fraction. So we get 42.5 over 100 times 80 over 1. Because 80 over 1 equals 80. And then I would basically cross cancel. Well, I can divide the 100 and the 80 by 10. And that will give me 100 divided by 10 is 10. And 80 divided by 10 is 8. Then I would divide the 10 by 2 and the 8 by 2. And that would give us 5 here. And this would give us 4. If we rewrite the problem, I'm just going to do it in red so you can see it. We would have 42.5 times 4 over 5. And then you're going to solve. So first off, we got to do 42.5 times 4. I'll just do it right over here. We're going to have 42.5 times 4. Well, I'm going to move that decimal out of the way, and I'll put it back when I'm done. So I'm just going to put a little 1 right there to remind me to put it back when I'm done. And then I just multiply 4 times 5 is 20, carry the 2. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10, carry the 1, and 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17, and when I'm done, 
I put the decimal one space back. That's what that one right here tells me to do. The final answer for that is 170. So we end up with, I'm just gonna write it right here, 170 over five. And now you have a fraction, but you can change a fraction to a long division problem by pushing it over. So 170 lands right here, and the five is right here. I close up the house, and I get a long division problem. 170 divided by five. Well, five goes into 17 three times. Three times five is 15. I subtract, I get two. I bring down the zero, and five goes into 24 times, and four times five is 20, and I get zero. So the final answer for this is 34. And that is the fraction way. Personally, I don't like the fraction way. I think it's just too much work. I prefer the decimal way. Let's take a look at the decimal way. Way number two. We have the same problem, 42. 0.5% of 80. And what you're going to do is, you're going to change the 42.5% to a decimal. And we already talked about this. A percent is out of 100. So all we're going to do is move the decimal two places to the left to change it into a decimal. So this turns into 0 0.425. It's always two spaces. When you're changing a percent to a decimal, it's two places or two spaces to the left. And when you're changing a decimal to a percent, it's two places or two spaces to the right. It's always two spaces. It does not change because you're dividing or multiplying by 100. I'll write that really quick for you in a second. Let's just solve this problem. We have of, and we just talked about this, of is multiplication times 80. Let's multiply this out. We're going to have 80 times 0 0.425. We need to move the decimal out of the way. One, two, three. So I put a little three here to remind me that I'm going to have to put the decimal three spaces back to the left. Or another way of looking at this is you have one, two, three digits to the right of the decimal. When you're done, you need three digits to the right of the decimal. This is basic multiplication, so hopefully you know how to do it. Let's multiply really quick. Zero times everything is zero. Honestly, you don't have to worry about this zero. You can put it in at the end, but I'm just doing it this way for you right now. Then you start in the tens place, so you need to add a placeholder, a zero. Then I do eight times five is 40, carry the four. Eight times two is 16, plus four is 20 carry the 2, and 8 times 4 is 32, plus 2 is 34. Really quick, you can just add this up. And then I take this decimal right here, it says 3, so I put the decimal 3 spaces back, or I have 3 digits to the right of the decimal, which gives us an answer of 34. Same exact answer as over there. So, there are two ways of solving these problems, and they always, always work. Now there's some shortcuts that we'll do, and it'll save us a lot of time, but if you don't get the shortcuts, you could always use one of these ways. I prefer doing the decimal way, and that's how I'm gonna solve these problems on this worksheet. So there is problem number one. The answer is 34. And if you were doing the odds, you chose odd, you'd be looking for all the 34s in this picture. If you didn't do odds, you're doing even, you would not shade this one in. By the way, this is a level two worksheet. If you find this really easy and you don't think you need my help, well, you don't have to listen to me, or maybe you should try the level three worksheet. If you find this really, really difficult, you're like, man, I don't get it, I don't know what I'm doing, someone please help me then maybe you should do the level one worksheet. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm working on the level two worksheet and I'm here to help you. So let's continue. Problem number two. Problem number two is a little different. You're missing the percent. So we have what percent of 50 equals six? When we did problem number one, we were working 
this way. But this time we're working this way. And when we worked left to right, we multiplied. But now we're going backwards or the opposite direction. That opposite word. Since we're going in the opposite direction, we do the opposite operation. So that means we're going to divide on this problem. All we do is 6 divided by 50 equals this answer. I'm going to rewrite this. 6 divided by 50 equals a percent. And I'm going to rewrite this as a long division problem. So the 6 goes in the inside, the 50 goes outside. Now don't get confused. Some of you might be thinking, why is the bigger number on the outside? You can't be thinking that way. Remember, you have to write it the way it sounds. 6 divided by 50. Well, this is 6 divided by 50 right here. So the bigger number is on the outside. 50 does not go into 6. We're going to have to add a decimal, bring it straight up. And that allows us to add zeros. I think we might need two of them. Now we have 60 right here. I'm looking right here since I added the zero. I don't worry about the decimal because I brought it straight up. 50 goes into 60 one time. You get 50, you subtract, you get 10. I bring down the other zero, I get 100. And 50 goes into 100 two times. Two times 50 is 100. You subtract, you get zero. So we get 0 0.12. But this right here is a decimal. And we need to change it to a percent. Well, we just talked about that. And to change a decimal to a percent, we move the decimal two spaces to the right. Always two spaces. Doesn't matter. Two spaces to the right, and we get 12. And then we just add the percent. The answer is 12%. We get 12% of 50 equals 6. I like to show you something really, 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 really quick. Okay? And this is a great shortcut. We didn't have to do all this work right here, and I'll show you why. And if you don't get it, don't worry. Just do it the way I just showed you. But I want to show some of you a shortcut. Let me rewrite this again. I will write it in blue right here. The question was asking what percent of 50 equals 6. We already know that of means multiplication, right? Well, when you're multiplying, order does not matter. So what we could do is we could actually take this percent right here and give it to the 50. And I could rewrite this problem and say 50% of a number equals 6. All I did was take that percent and give it to the 50. And some of you might be saying, well, why does that matter? Well, think about it for a second. You're saying 50% of a number will equal 6. And 50% means you're cutting a number in half. So what number would you cut in half and get 6? Ah, 12. Because half of 12 is 6. And we didn't have to do all this division over here. And this saved us time. And this is a great thing to do during a test because, you know, in a test, you're like, Oh, boy, I don't have enough time. I gotta finish. I gotta finish. I gotta finish. And you can also do this in your head. This is one of the shortcuts I wanted to show you. Shortcut number one. Woohoo! So the answer for problem number two is 12 or 12%. 12 if you were doing even, you would be looking for all the 12s in the picture. Hopefully you understand the directions up here about the odd and the even. All right, problem number three. We'll do this one before I set you free. 80% of 65. 80% of 65. 5. Well, 80%, we move the decimal two spaces to the left. If it's not in sight, it's on the right, so the decimal's right here. I move it two spaces to the left. I get 0 0.80. See how the percent's gone? It's a decimal now. The of turns into multiplication, and I have 65. 0 0.80 times 65. I'm just going to write it right over here. 
I'm going to move the decimal out of the way two spaces. So when I'm done, I need to put it back two spaces or have two digits to the right of the decimal. Multiply zero times everything is zero. Then we're starting in the tens place. So we add a placeholder. We do eight times five is 40, carry the four. Eight times six is 48 plus four is 52. Then I add this up really quick. We don't really add, you just copy it. And I put the decimal back. It's not in sight, so it's on the right. So I go one, two. So our final answer is going to be 52. 52, because the decimal, you don't have to worry about these two zeros. So this is 52. Problem number three, the answer is 52. And if you picked odd, you would shade all the 52s you find in the picture. Okay. What I'd like you to do is try problems four, five, and six. When you're finished with those, come back to me and we will check your answers. I will see you in a bit. Welcome back. You were supposed to work on four, five, and six. Problem four says 22% of 141. 22% of 141. And you're trying to find out what percent of that number you have or what piece you have. Well, first off, I am going to move the decimal two spaces to the left to change the percent to a decimal. So this becomes 0.22 because we're dividing this guy right here by 100. And when you divide by 100, you just move the decimal two spaces to the left. The of turns into multiplication, and we have 141. So we're quickly just going to multiply 0 0.22 times 141. I move the decimal out of the way so it's not there anymore. I don't worry about it until I'm done. I will put it back. Then I multiply. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 1 is 2. Then I need to add a placeholder because we're starting in the tens place right here. And we do it again, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 1 is 2. Then I add this up, 2 plus 0 is 2, 8 plus 2 is 10, carry the 1. 1 plus 2 plus 8 is 11, carry the 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Then I put the decimal back, one, two. So the final answer I'm gonna get is 31.02, because the decimal's moved right there. Well, the direction said round or estimate to the nearest whole number, and 31.02 is very, very close to 31. So our answer up here is 31. And this is just an approximation, but 31 is very close. So we will use that as our answer. Problem number four, the answer is 31. Problem number five, we have 40% of a number equals 80. 40% of a number equals 80. Again, if we were working from left to right, it would be multiplication. But since we're missing the answer here, we're going to have to go backwards. So this is going to be a division problem. All we do is we write 80 divided by 40% equals a number. And before we can start dividing, we're going to have to change this 40% to a decimal. 80 divided by, we move the decimal two spaces to the left. If it's not in sight, it's on the right. So it starts here, and then we move two spaces to the left. This becomes divided by 0 0.40 equals a number. We're going to have to write this as a long division problem. So I'm going to write it over here. We're going to have 80 divided by 0 0.40. Well, we have a problem. We have a decimal on the outside, and we can't have that. So we're going to need to move it two spaces out of the way to change it into a whole number. We move it, this is going to become 40. Correct? But whatever you do to the outside, you have to do the inside. So you have to move the decimal two spaces to the right 
for the 80 too. And if it's not in sight, it's on the right. Then we move it two spaces and we have to add two zeros. This actually turns into 8,000 divided by 40. And that's the best way to do a long division problem with the decimal. We're going to divide this. Well, honestly, first off, you see this zero right here. You could cancel this zero because this guy's got a zero and we can cancel each one out. So really, this becomes 800 divided by 4. If you didn't understand this right here that I did, you could always just divide 8,000 by 40. But there's a shortcut right there. You can just cross cancel or you could simplify by dividing both numbers by 10 right away. You can cross out a zero on each number. We are dividing 800 by 4. 4 goes into 8 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. You subtract, you get 0. You bring down a 0. Well, that's too small, so we add a 0 there. We bring down a 0, and that's too small, so it is 0. Final answer is 200. You could have probably done this in your head, and you probably should have known that 200 times 4 is 800. 40% of 200 equals 80. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a sec, how did all this work? Am I 100% sure that that's the answer? Well, 40% is really quick to 50%, and 50% means half. So what's half of 200 is 100. And isn't 80 really close? Well, I'm pretty sure this looks correct. Problem number five, the answer is 200. By the way, if I'm going too fast or you're getting confused, remember this is a video. You can always stop and rewind and listen to me again. Or if you think I'm talking too much and you don't need my help, well, you don't have to listen to me. Just do the worksheet on your own. I'm here to help the people who need help. So let's take a look at problem number six. 32% of a number equals 24. 32% of a number equals 24. We are going the opposite direction or backwards, so we're going to have to divide. So really, this problem is saying 24 divided by 32% equals a number. And before we start, we need to move the decimal two spaces to the left to change the percent to a decimal. So this turns into 24 divided by 0 0.32 equals a number. 24 divided by 0 0.32. I cannot have a decimal on the outside, so I have to move it one, two. But whatever I do the outside, I have to do the inside. The decimal's not in sight, it's on the right, so it's right here, one, two. I'm going to put zeros right here. So this number becomes let me rewrite that really quick. This number becomes 2,400. And this number out here becomes 32 because I want it to be a whole number. I do not want a decimal out here. We end up with 2,400 divided by 32. Well, 32 does not go into 24 at all, so 0, 0. You don't have to write the zeros, but I like doing it just to show a place, but I'll erase it. Now we're at how many times does 32 go into 240? So what I do is I estimate this number to about 30 and I calculate approximately how many times would 30 go into 240? Well, eight times three is 24. I know it's close to eight, but I think eight's too high. I would try seven. Seven times 32, I can write this right over here, 32 times seven. Seven times two is 14, carry the one. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 1 is 22. So this is 2, 2, 4, which is perfect. I'm going to subtract. And I'm going to get, well, you can't do 0 minus 4, so we're going to borrow. 10 minus 4 is 6. 3 minus 2 is 1. And you get 2 minus 2 is 0. Well, I'm going to bring down this 0, and I get 160. Well, how many times does 30, because I estimated this to 30 really quick to kind of get a guess. How many times does 30 go into 160? Five times 30 is 150, so my guess would be this is five. Then I take the five and multiply it by the 32, not the 30, the 32. 
So 5 times 32, I'll write it right here for you so you can see what I did. 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 160. Wow, 160, I subtract, I get 0. The answer is 75. This problem right here is saying 32% of 75 equals 24. Number 6, the answer is 75. All right, this is what I want you to do. I want you to try to do problem 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Try to do all these problems right here on your own. When you're finished, come back to me and we will check your answers. See you in a bit. back. You were supposed to do problems 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Problem 7 says what percent of 160 equals 72? What percent of 160 equals 72? Again, we are going the opposite direction or backwards, so we're not multiplying. We're going to have to divide. If you rewrite this, you're going to say 72 divided by 160 is going to equal what percent? We rewrite this right here as a long division problem. We're going to write 72 divided by 160. You already know that 72 is too small. We're going to have to add a decimal here, bring it straight up, and then this allows us to add zeros. So we got 720 divided by 160. The question is, how many times will 160 go into 720? Well, probably four. And you might ask, how did I guess four? Well, I'm changing 160 to 150 in my head, and four times 150 is 600, which is pretty close to 720, because if you add another 150, it would be too high. So my guess would be four. So I'm going to put a four right here. And four times 160, let's just write it right over here, 160. 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 6 is 24, carry a 2, and 4 times 1 is 640. And if I put 640 right here and I subtract, I get 0, you got to borrow from the 7, becomes a 6, 2 becomes a 12, and I get 80. I picked the right answer because this number right here is smaller than 160, which tells me I couldn't put in another 160. Then I bring down this other zero right here, and I get 800. So I'm asking myself, how many times does 160 go into 800? Well, I would guess it has to be less than six. And again, you might be thinking, how did I know six? Because if I change 160 to 150 again, and multiply that by six, I am gonna get 900, which is too big. My guess is this will be five. And over here, I'm going to do it again, 5 times 160, 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 6 is 30, carry the 3, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8. Ooh-wee, perfect. We're going to write 800 right here, subtract, and we get 0. The answer is 0 0.45. But don't forget, this is a percent. We need to change the decimal to a percent. You have to move the decimal to spaces. The question is, do you move it to the left or to the right? We're changing a decimal to a percent, so we move it to the right. One, two, this equals 45%. The answer for problem number seven is 45 or 45%. I'm just gonna write 45%, but remember, when you're looking for it in the picture, you're looking for 45, because the percent's actually right there already. Number eight, 62.5% of 196.8. 62.5% of 196.8. Well, we're gonna have to rewrite this. We need to move the decimal two spaces to the left to change the percent to a decimal. It becomes 0 0.625. Of turns into multiplication. And 196.8 is going to equal some number. 
we have everything, so we're going to be working from left to right, or we're going forward, so we just multiply. Let's multiply this, I'm just going to do it right over here, 0 0.625 times 196.8. If you notice, you don't have to line up your decimals when you're multiplying, because you're just going to move them out of the way anyway. I'm going to move this one one space over, so I'm going to put a 1 here. This one is 3, 1, 2, 3 which gives me a total of four. When I'm done, I need to move the decimal four spaces to the left, or I'm gonna to have to have four digits to the right of the decimal. Let me just rewrite this really quick so it's not so messy. One, nine, six, eight, times six, two, five. It's gonna be a lot of work. All right, let's start multiplying. big number. But over here, we had four. So we need to put the decimal four places or four spaces back. So one, two, three, four. So this answer becomes 123. 62.5% of 196.8 is 123. The answer for problem number eight is 123. Number nine, 75% of a number equals 45. 75% of a number equals 45. Well, we're missing this. So really, this is 75% times something equals 45. But we're going to have to work backwards because we're missing this piece right here. This is going to turn into a division problem, not a multiplication problem. So really, this is going to say 45 divided by 75% is going to equal some number. Well, we don't want the percent. We're going to have to change it to a decimal. We're going to have to move the decimal two spaces to the left to change a percent to a decimal, we end up with 45 divided by 0 0.75 equals a number. And we're just going to do a long division problem. The 45 goes inside. We're going to divide by 0 0.75. Well, right here, we do not want a decimal. We're going to move the decimal out of the way, 1, 2. And if we do that on the outside, we have to do the same thing to the inside. If the decimal's not in sight, it's on the right, so it's right here. And I'm going to move this two spaces, just like I did over here, I'm going to do right there. And I'm going to put zeros in the empty space, so we end up with this. Why don't I rewrite this problem over here so it's nice and clean and we don't get too confused. So we have plenty of space over here. I'm going to write 75, 4, 4. 500. Zero, zero. We have 4,500 divided by 75. Whew, that's some big numbers there. All right. Well, I'm going to change this 75 to 80 just to help me estimate an uh, answer here. So, how many times does 80 go into 450? Well, 8 times 6 is 48. My guess would probably be 5. So, I'm going to put a 5 right here. And then I'm going to multiply 5 times 75. I'm just going to do it right down here to show my work. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 2 is 37. So I'm going to get 375. And if I subtract, it should be low enough. But if I subtract this, I actually get 75. And what does that tell us? That tells us that we can actually put another 75 in the answer. So really, this is not 5. This is 6. And I'll just show you just to confirm I am correct, or prove that I'm correct. 6 times 5 
is 30, write the 3. 6 times 7 is 42, plus 3 is 45. Woohoo! This is going to be 450. I subtract, I get 0. Well, you can't forget this 0 right here. So you bring this down. Well, 0 is too small, so this must be 0. And there you go to show all the work. So 60 goes right here. Let me erase this stuff over here a little bit. The final answer here is 75% of 60 equals 45. Number 9, the answer is 60. All right, so problem 10. You have an unknown percent of 8 equals 2.08. We have an unknown percent, question mark, percent of 8 equals 2.08. Since we're going backwards, means we're going to have to divide. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2.08 divided by 8 equals an unknown percent. I have to do some long division over here, so I'm going to rewrite this like this, 2.08 divided by 8. We get 0.26, but that's a decimal, so we need to change that into a percent. And again, we always move the decimal two spaces when we're going from percent to decimal or decimal to percent. So for changing it to a percent, we are going to go to the right, one, two. This equals 26%. Problem 10 is 26 or 26%. Remember, you're only looking for this 26 in the picture above, not a percent sign, because the percent was already in the answer. Problem 11, 150% of 52. 100 and 50% of 52. I'm going to take a little shortcut on this problem because I know that 100% of 52 means I have the entire thing, so that is 52. And 50% 50 of 52 means I have half of 52, which is what's half of 52. 26 and if I put this all back together 100% plus 50% is 150% of 52 equals 2 plus 6 is 8 and 5 plus 2 is 7 equals 78 so the answer is 78 number 12 we have 15% of 533 15% of 533. We're going this way. We change this to a decimal by moving the decimal two spaces to the left because we're dividing by 100. So this becomes 0 0.15 of turns into times and 533. Quickly, I'm just going to multiply this over here. put the decimal back, doing, doing, two spaces. So we get 79.95, but we need to estimate to the nearest whole number. So this is approximately 80. Our answer up here is 80. If you wanted to check your answer on this one, do you know that when you find 10% of a number, let's say 533, all you do is move the decimal one place over. So 10% is 53.3. And another 5% would be half of this. And what's half of 53.3? Approximately 26 or 27, whichever one you want to use. If you add this really quick, don't worry about this part. 3 plus 6 is 9. 5 plus 2 is 7. So I get 79, which is really close to 80. And this is a great way of just checking your answer really quick. If you didn't catch it, don't worry about it too much. So I'm going to put 80 
here. What I'd like you to do is try to do problem 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 on your own. When you finish, come back to me and we will check your answers. See you in a bit. Welcome back. You were supposed to do 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Problem 13. You have 40% of a number equals 49.2. 40% of a number equals 49.2. We are going backwards, so we're going to change this to a division problem. 49.2 divided by 40%. We're going to change 40% to a decimal, so we're going to move the decimal two spaces to the left. We end up with 49.2 divided by 0 0.40. To tell you the truth, you really don't need to worry about that 0. Remember, 0.4 is the same as 0 0.400, is the same as 0 0.4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, they're all the same. These zeros mean absolutely nothing. So really, this is 49.2 divided by 0.4. Let's write this as a long division problem. I'm going to do it right over here. 49.2 divided by 0.4. We need to move the decimal on the outside to get rid of it to turn this into a whole number. So we move it one space, which means I need to move this one one space. The problem actually turns into 4 on the outside and 492 in the inside. Let's divide. Final answer is 123. Right here, 40% of a number, which is 123, equals 49.2. The answer to problem 13 is 123. Problem 14, you have an unknown percent of 300 equals 9. Unknown percent of 300 equals 9. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this, and I'm thinking this in my head really, 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 really quick, and I'm thinking to myself, why don't I just take this percent and give it over here? If I do that, then I'm saying 300% of a number equals 9. You might be thinking, why did you do that? Well, I did that because I could actually do this in my head, that 100% plus 100% plus 100% equals 300%. And if I was finding out 100% of 100% of 100% of something, and these numbers would all have to be the same and equal 9, what would that number be? And if you don't get what I'm saying is this plus this plus this will equal 9. And it has to be the exact same number. Think about it. It's like a puzzle. Ah, 3 plus 3 plus 3 equals 9. So 100% of 3, 100% of 3, and 100% of 3 equals 9. So this is 300% of 3 equals 9. This number right here is 3%. Hopefully some of you saw this. If you didn't, you can always just divide. 9 divided by 300 will give you the percent. 3% 3 of 300 equals 9. Problem 15. 61% of a number equals 21.35. 61% of a number equals 21.35. Well, we're going to have to go backwards because we're missing something right here. If we actually went forward, it would be multiplication. But since we're going backwards, it has to be the opposite since we're going the opposite direction, which means it'll have to be division. So I'm going to do 21.35 divided by 61% 
will give me the answer to this unknown number. I need to move the decimal to change the percent to a decimal. I'm gonna move it two spaces to the left. We end up with 21.35 divided by 0.61 equals some unknown number. 21.35 divided by 0.61 you can't have a decimal out here, so we're gonna move the decimal two spaces over to turn this 61 into a whole number. But if I do that on the outside, I have to do it in the inside, so two spaces. 2,135 divided by 61. I'm gonna change this 61 to 60 in my head. 60 doesn't go into two, doesn't go into 21, so we have to look at 213. Well, how many times does 60 go into that number? Three times six is 18, but four times six is 24. So this has to be a three. So then I'm gonna multiply three times 61. All I was doing is trying to find an estimate to find a better guess to put for my answer. So three times one is three, three times six is 18. If I subtract, I get zero, borrow from the two, it turns into an 11. 11 minus 18 is three, so I end up with 30, which is perfect, because 30 is less than 61. I bring down this five, and I get 305. So the question is, how many times does 61 go into 305? Well, again, I can change this to 60 and say, how many times does 60 go into 300? Well, five times, because five times six is 30. So if I multiply this five times 61, five times one is five and five times six is 30, we get the exact answer. So the answer is 35. This problem is saying that 61% of 35 equals 21.35. Problem 15 is 35. Problem 16. Problem 16 is saying what percent of 500 equals 220? What percent of 500 equals 220? And again, we cannot work forward because we're missing this piece right here. So we're gonna have to work in the opposite direction, which means we're not gonna multiply, we're gonna do the opposite, which means division. So we're just gonna say 220 divided by 500 equals some percent. And I'm just gonna change this into a long division problem, 220 divided by 500. So the answer here is 0.44, but you're changing this into a percent and we already talked about this, you have to move the decimal always two places. And since we're changing it to a percent, we should make the number bigger. We're gonna move the decimal to the right. So we get 44%. So this problem is saying 44% of 500 equals 220. This is gonna be 44 or 44%, but remember you're only looking for 44 in the picture above. Problem 17, what percent of 60 equals 1.8? We have what percent of 60 equals 1.8? And again, we cannot work this way because we're missing this piece. We have to work the opposite direction and do the opposite operation. We're gonna rewrite this problem as 1.8 divided by 60 equals an unknown percent. And we're just gonna do a long division problem. I'm gonna write it right here. This is gonna be 1.8 divided by 60. So our answer is 0 0.03. But again, we need to switch this to a percent so we need to move the decimal two spaces to the right, which gives us three. So the answer is 3%. 3% of 60 equals 1.8. So problem 17 is three or 3%. Three problem 18, 20%, 20% of 55 
equals, and this is an easy problem because all you do is change the 20% to 10% of 55, and to find that, move the decimal one space, or one place. This actually equals 5.5. .5. Well, if you do this twice, 10% of 55 equals 5.5. .5. You can add this together. 10% plus 10% is 20%, which is this right here, of 55. Then we just add this together. 5.5 5 .5 plus 5.5, 5, .5. 5 plus 5 is 0. Bring the decimal straight down. Carry the 1. 5 plus 5 plus 1 is 11. So the answer is 11. You probably could have done this in your head, but I just wanted to show you on the paper. The answer for number 18 is 11. Why don't you work on problems 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. When you're done, come back to me and we will check your answers. See you in a bit. Welcome back. You were supposed to do problems 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Let's try to do these really quick. Remember, if you're getting a little tired, because this is a lot of problems, I'm getting tired. But if you're getting tired, you can always take a break. Go get a glass of orange juice, have a cup of tea, stretch your legs, stretch your brain. But don't just sit here and fall asleep and copy what I do. Make sure you're paying attention. And if it's too easy for you, then just get it done. But if you need help, I'm here for you. So let's get started on problem number 19. Number 19 is 175% of a number, which we don't know, equals 12.25. Well, we can't go forward because we have an unknown here. We're going to have to go backwards, which means we're going to do division. And by the way, I say I'm going backwards, but I'm really solving this using algebra. I just don't want to get into the whole algebra thing while we're solving percent of a number. So I'm just saying we're going in the opposite direction, so we're going to use division. We're going to rewrite this as 12.25 divided by 175% equals an unknown number. First off, we need to change this percent to a decimal. So I'm going to move the decimal two spaces. So it becomes 1.75. We're going to have 12.25 divided by 1.75 equals an unknown number. Over here, I'm going to write the long division problem. It's a doozy, huh? 12.25 divided by 1.75. You can't have a decimal on the outside, so I'm going to get rid of it to make it into a whole number, 175. But whatever I do to the outside, I have to do to the inside, so 1, 2. We're going to rewrite this problem. Let me just erase this really quick so it's gone. Look at that. Woohoo! It's gone. That problem looks like this. So we're going to have 1,225 divided by 175. So the answer here is 7. So if we rewrite this, 175% of 7 equals 12.25. So that was the unknown answer. Problem number 19 is 7. Problem number 20, 5% of 160. I'm going to do this really quick right here. We already know that 10% of 160, all we're going to do is move the decimal one space over. So 10% of 160 is 16. Well, 5%, that's half of 10. So all we do is divide this number by 2, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. 5% 5 of 160 is 8. If you need to look at that a little longer, you can press pause, but I'm going to erase it right now. So I'm going to erase it and put the answer is 8. Problem 21, what percent of 76 equals 11.4? What percent, what percent of 76 equals 11.4? You can't go forward, 
because we're missing this right here. We're going to have to go in the opposite direction, which is division. So I'm going to rewrite this problem. 11.4 divided by 76 equals an unknown percent. I just turned it around. We can just put this into a long division problem. 11.4 divided by 76. is 0 0.15 but remember the questions asking for a percent and this is in a decimal so to change it to a percent we need to move the decimal two spaces back to the right because a percent is out of a hundred this would be 15 out of a hundred or 15 percent final answer is 15 percent of 76 equals 11.4. That's 15. I can put a percent right there, but remember when you're looking at the top up here for your numbers, if you're doing odd, only if you're doing odd, you're only looking for 15. Problem 22, 65% of 80. 65% of 80. We can go forward this way, so all we do is change this to a decimal, one, two. So we get 0 0.65. I change of to multiplication, and we get 80. Multiply 0 0.65 times 80. <laughs> Then we get 9% of something equals 0 0.99. 9% of something equals 0 0.99. Ha! Huh. You know this is 9% times something equals 0 0.99. And the only way to get two nines is to multiply this 9 by 11. So all we have to do is figure out where the decimal is. You know this is going to be 11, but I don't know where the decimal is. Is it 1.1? Is it 0.11? Figure that out really quick is we could just change this percent to a decimal. 1, 2. That makes it 0 0.09. So you just ask yourself what times 0 0.09 will equal 0 0.99? Well, it's got to be 11 exactly, actually. This is 11. Hopefully you got that. 11 there. Last one of this set, 2.8% of 1,000. 2.8% of 1,000. 2.8% of 1,000 equals an unknown number. Let's just multiply this really quick. We're going to change a percent to a decimal by moving the decimal two spaces. I put a zero in the empty space. So this becomes 0 0.028 of is times 1,000. Now, honestly, you don't have to multiply this because if you're multiplying by a multiple of 10, like 10, 100, 1,000, 10 million, 1 trillion, anything that just has a bunch of zeros, all you do is move the decimal for every zero you have. I have three zeros. Since I'm multiplying, I'm going to make it bigger, so I'm just going to move the decimal three spaces for each zero to make it bigger, which gives us 28. Eight. The answer for number 24 is 28. All right, last set, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. All right, why don't you give those a try and come back to me and we will check your answers. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Problem 25, 4% of a number equals 2.6. 4% of a number equals 2.6. So we're trying to find 4% of a number equals 2.6. Well, we can't multiply because we are missing this piece. So we have to go the opposite direction and divide. 
And I think that would probably be the best way to do this problem. We're going to rewrite the problem. 2.6 divided by 4% equals some unknown number. I've got to change this percent to a decimal, so I'm going to move the decimal two spaces to the left. We end up with 2.6 divided by 0 0.04 equals a number. And now we're just going to do a long division problem. We have 2.6 divided by 0 0.04. But I already told you, you can't have a decimal out here. So we're going to have to move it out of the way. We have to move it 1, 2 to change it to a whole number. So that it actually becomes 4. Then the 2.6, I've got to move the decimal two spaces because whatever I do to the outside, I have to do the inside. So 1, 2, and I'm going to put a 0 in the empty space. This turns into a problem, 260 divided by 4. Well, 4 goes into 26 six times. 6 times 4 is 24. You subtract, you get 2, bring down the 0, and 4 goes into 25 times. 5 times 4 is 20, and you are done. The unknown answer is 65. So 4% of 65 equals 2.6. Done. Number 25 is 65. 26. A percent of 75 equals 3. Percent of 75 equals 3. This is actually kind of an easy problem because I, what I could do is I can move this percent over here and change this to 75% of a number equals 3. And when you're dealing with percents like 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%, a lot of times you could do this in your head. Hopefully, some of you will start figuring this out. If you don't, you're just going to have to divide on this problem. You're going to have to do 3 divided by 75. But if you're actually thinking about it, I could tell you right off the bat the answer is 4. And you might be thinking, how did you know that? And I will tell you how I know that. Let me write this again right here. 25%, 50%, 75%, I know in my head that 100% of 4 equals 4. 50% of 4 equals 2. Do you see a pattern here? 75% of 4 must equal 3. And 25% of 4 equals 1. You see this 1, 2, 3, 4, 25, 50, 75, 100. And I looked for the pattern like that. So that gave me an answer of 4 because 75% of 4, this is all of 4, would give me the 3. You can also know that 75% is 3 fourths. So you're trying to find 3 fourths of a number to give you 3. Well, the only way that happened is if you put a 4 here, because 3 fourths times 4 equals 3. You'd cross cancel these, it would leave you the 3. And 75% is 3 fourths. 25% is 1 fourth, 50% is 1 half, 75% is 3 fourths, and 100% is 4 over 4. It's complete, it's 100%. It's another way of looking at these percentages as a fraction. The answer is 4. Hopefully I just didn't get you so confused, your head exploded. <laughs> Hopefully that didn't happen. Well, let's move on. Number 26 is 4. Number 27. 80% of a number equals 4. 80% of a number equals 4. And again, you could break this down and try to figure out little ways of doing this. I could actually do this in my head again, but I don't want to keep on doing that. It might confuse you a little bit. So let's work backwards. We're going to rewrite this, and we're going to say 4 divided by 80% equals a number. i got to change that percent to a decimal, so I'm going to move the decimal two spaces to the left. So we end up with 4 divided by 0 0.80 equals an unknown number. Do I really care about this 0 right here? No, it's gone. So really, we end up with 4 divided by 0 0.8 equals an unknown number. we got to do this long division problem. And we end up with 4 divided by 0 0.8.
Remember, I can't have a decimal on the outside, so I have to change it to a whole number. I'm gonna move the decimal one space over, and if I do that, I have to do that here too. I end up with 40. Our new problem is going to be 40 divided by eight. So how many times does eight go into 40? You guessed it, five times, and we are done. The answer is 80% of five equals four. And there's another way of looking at this if you want to do this really quick, and I know I'm talking too much, but I just want to see if some of you guys can get this. If you actually write 20%, 40%, 60%, 80% and 100%, you can break this down into one, two, three, four, five. If we were gonna do 80%, we can change the 80% to four over five times some number that we don't know equals four. Well, the only way that to get this to work is to put a five here because they can cross cancel and they're gone. So the answer is four. The unknown must have been five. And I got four fifths because 20% is the same as saying one fifth. 40% is the same as two fifths. 60% is the same as three fifths. 80% is the same as four fifths. And 100% is the same as five over five, or five fifths. That's why I knew I could change 80% to four fifths. And the only number to multiply by four fifths to get this four is five. Hopefully some of you might start figuring this out and it might make your life a little easier. If you don't, you can always just divide. There's nothing wrong with that. This is five. 28, 15% of a number equals nine. 15% of a number equals nine. Nine. Let's just do the opposite of multiplication because we're going to have to work backwards because we're missing this piece right here. So I'm going to write this as 9 divided by 15% equals an unknown number. Well, I'm going to change the percent to a decimal. So 1, 2, always two spaces. We end up with 9 divided by 0 0.15 equals an unknown number. Now we do long division, so we get 9 divided by 0 0.15. And you get an answer of 60. You'd say 15% of 60 equals nine. Over here, I am going to write 60. Number 29, a percent of 8 equals 12. A percent, unknown percent, of 8 equals 12. Again, we're going to have to work backwards. We're going to write 12 divided by 8 equals an unknown percent. Just quickly do a long division problem. have 1.5, but we need to change this to a percent. Remember, this is a decimal right here. We need to change it to a percent, so we need to move the decimal two spaces to the right. We need to make the number bigger because it is out of 100. This turns into 150%. 150% of 8 equals 12. By the way, if you are being silly and you put the 1.5 here, Let's say you put the 1.5 right here, and you were saying, it's 1.5% of eight equals 12. How do you know that that percent cannot, 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 cannot be right? Well, I can tell you, you are taking a percent of eight, and the number is getting bigger. That means you have more than 100%. This 1.5% cannot be correct. And since it's 150%, it sounds correct because it's bigger than 100%. I'm going to write 150 right here. It's a percent, but remember you're looking up here. You only care about the 150. Last problem. 8% of a number equals 2. 8% of a number 
equals two. We cannot work forwards, we cannot multiply. We're gonna have to work backwards, which means we're gonna have to divide. I'm gonna rewrite this, two divided by 8% equals an unknown number. First, I have to change this percent to a decimal, so one, two, always two spaces to the left. I'm gonna put a zero in the empty space. Sorry, it's kind of messy there. So this is gonna turn into two divided by 0 0.08 equals an unknown percent. By the way, you don't have to write this zero if you don't want to. I am just writing it to show you there's no whole numbers. Now we gotta do a long division problem. We're gonna have two divided by 0 0.08. <laughs> Answer is 25. So 8% of 25 equals 2. Come back over here, and our answer is going to be 25. And guess what? We got all 30 problems done. Woo wee! That was a lot of problems. Well, I hope I helped, and I will see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>